This podcast is part of the Dark Myths Collective. Visit darkmyths.org to discover more shows like this one. The darkness awaits. This is a podcast on the Podfix Network. You can check out more shows like it at podfixnetwork.com. Christmas in Philadelphia is absolutely my most favorite time of year to be in the city. There are so many wonderful ways to celebrate winter, Christmas, and the year-end holiday season. Last year, I released an episode about some of my favorite holiday happenings in Philadelphia, the surrounding suburbs, and a little farther out beyond the city. It's hard to find other activities besides the ones shared last year, like the Light Festival at Franklin Square in the historic district, Longwood Gardens in Kennett Square, Christmas Village, which moved back to Love Park this year, although there are a few chalets at City Hall this year too, and of course, the Macy's Christmas Light Show. I don't want to simply re-release last year's episode or tell you about all those same events again. So I dug a little deeper. I searched a little harder, I ventured in and outside the city to bring you a new list of holiday happenings from the city of brotherly love and sisterly affection. And we'll have some from the Burbs, too. I'm Dina Marie, your host on this not-so-twisted journey. Welcome to Twisted Philly. There's more mischief, mayhem, and nefarious goings-on in the city of brotherly love than Billy Penn could have ever imagined. We've got it all here on the Twisted Philly podcast. True crime, haunted history, the coolest and creepiest places to visit. Welcome Welcome to to Twisted Twisted Philly. Philly. If you haven't yet listened to episode 16, Twisted Philly Holiday Happenings, go back and listen to that episode. It's filled with so many fun and exciting events in and around Philadelphia, some of the obvious events that won't be featured in this episode. Once you listen to episode 16, then you can come back and listen to this episode for round two. Although I would have no way of knowing whether or not you actually listened to episode 16 first. So technically, you don't have to do anything I just said. I'm going to kick things off with a quick drive over the bridge into New Jersey and tell you about the favorite spot of a special little boy in my life. And that's the Adventure Aquarium in Camden. It's literally five minutes from Philly. Now through December 30th, you can see the world's tallest underwater Christmas tree. Shit, it could be the only underwater Christmas tree in the world. It's almost 20 feet tall and decorated with shells and Christmas lights. You can get your photo taken with Santa every Saturday and Sunday through December 23rd. That is, once he finishes scuba diving. That's right, Twisters, because at Adventure Aquarium, Santa scuba dives. There's the Merry Elfish story time, where one of Santa's elves shares the story of Scuba Santa. Adventure Aquarium also features the I Believe in Scuba Santa live show. It runs daily through Christmas. And on December 9th and 16th, you can enjoy cookies and milk with Santa from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Tickets are required for admission to the aquarium and for the milk and cookies event with Santa. You can get show times, event times, ticket information, everything you need is on their website at adventureaquarium.com. And besides all the wonderful Santa celebrations they have going on right now, the Adventure Aquarium in Camden is really one of the best aquariums in the country. Even the big kids will love it. Some of the best views in Philadelphia are found at Liberty One Observation Deck. That's at 1650 Market Street. This year, the Observation Deck is transformed into a Christmas wonderland, celebrating three Philadelphia holiday traditions. The Mummers, who have a crazy parade every year on New Year's Day, They used to be completely drunk out of their minds, but then a bunch of shit started a few years ago, and now there's a lot less drinking at the Mummers Parade. 
Miracle on South 13th Street, which I covered in last year's Holiday Happenings episode, and the Pennsylvania Ballet. There's costumes, decorations, and the views of Philadelphia behind you from 57 stories up. It's a 360-degree view of the city, and it's brilliant. If you come to Philly, it is definitely worth a trip to the top of Liberty One to see Philadelphia in all of its Christmas glory. Ticket prices vary depending on what time you go. Children between the ages of 3 and 11 are between 9 to 13 bucks for tickets. And then adults ages 12 and up are between 14 to 19 bucks. Although 12-year-olds aren't technically adults, but you can take that up with Liberty Place. You can find out about ticket sales, general admission tickets. They have a package called Sun and Stars, which gives you two visits on the same day. So you can see the city during the day and then again at night when it's even more fabulous. They've also got family ticket packs. Everything is on their website at phillyfromthetop.com. An annual tradition in Philadelphia, and I'm sure so many cities across the country, is getting dressed up and heading downtown to see the Nutcracker. For almost 50 years, the Pennsylvania Ballets performed George Blanchine's The Nutcracker at the Academy of Music, which that building in and of itself is just a remarkable experience. It's so beautiful. I've seen this production a few times over the years. I went when I was in high school. I took my daughter when she was young. And to this day, I love seeing pictures of friends and their families when they take their children to see The Nutcracker. It's like a holiday rite of passage, especially for little girls who dance themselves and they imagine performing in the Nutcracker someday. The show runs through December 31st. For showtimes and tickets, go to paballet.org. If you've never been before, the Nutcracker is kind of a long show for little kids. So bring snacks and be sure to hide them in your purse or you'll get stuck paying seven bucks for a pack of Reese cups. If you've never been to Fairmount Park, the holidays are such a magical time to venture out and visit all of the historic mansions throughout the park. Fairmount Park is one of the world's largest city parks and it's filled with history. The mansions in Fairmount Park date back to the mid 1700s, like Woodford Mansion and Cedar Grove, Laurel Hill and the Strawberry Mansion. Yes, some of these names may sound familiar to you as sections of our city carry the same names. These properties are magnificent. They're filled with period holiday decorations. The entire tableau transports you back in time and you can imagine Philadelphia before the Revolutionary War. Yes, I'm getting very excited because I love visiting these mansions around Christmas. There are so many different activities happening at each of the Fairmount mansions. The park hosts something called December Drop-In all month long, where you can pick one or more of these incredible homes to drop in and tour, but you do need tickets for each house. Plus, there are other special events during December. On Saturday, December 9th, they host Neighbors Day. That's where the park displays the talents of Fairmount neighbors who live near the park or right along the edge of the park and the edge of these historic mansions. Sunday, December 10th is Flavors of the Season. The park encourages you to bring your appetite and your culinary curiosity to these historic houses because some of Philly's best restaurants and food purveyors will be on site with samples and demonstrations. And trust me, by the time you get done sampling all these little teeny morsels of food, you are stuffed beyond belief. To get tickets, if you want to check out the drop-in dates or special events, go to their website, www.holidaysinthepark.com, and bring your camera because you will want to capture these magnificent homes adorned for the holidays. While you're in the Fairmount Park area, you can also celebrate the holidays at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Every Wednesday night through December 27th, the museum hosts card-making events from 5.30 till 7.30, I am hoping I can get there this Wednesday, and if not this Wednesday, then the following week. On Friday nights, they host a holiday-themed event with performances and cocktails. Just another reason to get your holiday drank on. They've got a great program for kids over winter break. 
definitely bring them to visit the art museum between December 26th and January 1st, anytime between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. for some terrific events where kids can make their own art and they get to explore the museum. And don't just hit the museum for the holiday celebrations. Take time to actually tour the museum. Get some damn culture in your lives, people. The museum is over 90 years old, and it has one of the most extraordinary art collections in the entire world. Yeah, right here in Philadelphia. We have what's described as the finest collection of Rodin sculptures in the U.S. and the most important collection of works by Michael Duchamp. The museum offers these incredible period rooms. They've got collections from Manet and Monet, Cezanne, Renoir, plus traditional American and Pennsylvania art on display. I love visiting the Philadelphia Art Museum over the holidays, even if I don't attend the holiday events, because I just love the Christmas vibe around that beautiful old building, plus the lights along Boathouse Row right outside the Art Museum. They change colors for the holidays. Oh, shit, Boathouse Row. Oh, man, I just realized there's a lot of you who have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. Okay, so Boathouse Row is exactly what it sounds like. It's a row of boathouses along the Schuylkill River next to the Philadelphia Art Museum. Some of the best views of Boathouse Row are from Martin Luther King Boulevard, which runs parallel to the river. It's actually, in my opinion, the best view of the river and a section of the Schuylkill that looks absolutely pristine during every season. There are tons of other views of the Schuylkill from other parts of the city, but they really suck because they're dirty as hell. The problem with Martin Luther King Boulevard is unless you stop at a red light, you don't have an opportunity to really pause and take in that beautiful scenery of the Schuylkill and Boathouse Row. Boathouse Row supports the Schuylkill Navy, founded in 1868, and the Fairmount Rowing Association, founded in 1877. The two organizations merged just about 100 years ago, and basically they're rowing clubs, groups of people who come down to the river early in the morning to row on the Schuylkill at sunrise and at other times in the day, too. It's the home of the Dadvale Regatta, which is the largest collegiate rowing event in the country. These historic 19th century houses on Boathouse Row are used by the rowing clubs, and the boathouses are absolutely beautiful. At night, they're lit up with white lights that outline the edges of the homes, and during the holidays, the lights are changed to red and white and other colors. We have a photograph. Okay, this is crazy. We have a photograph of one particular house along Boathouse Row that my father took when I was very little. He was really a quite fabulous amateur photographer. So this photo was captured during the winter after a snowstorm. Someone shoveled a boat ramp at this house on Boathouse Row, but they didn't shovel the entire ramp. They shoveled out four letters, and I'm sure you can guess what they were. I would love to share this photo with all of you, but I don't think my mom will let me borrow it. Boathouse Row is worth the drive day or night. During the day, you can see the history of these beautiful homes, and at night, the reflection of the lights that line the houses, it just sparkles along the river. It's so beautiful. Last year, I told you about the miracle in South 13th Street. That's a neighborhood in South Philly with one of the best Christmas lights display in the entire city. Well, there's another block or two that is a pretty fantastic spectacle of lights. Maybe not as incredible as South 13th Street, but still pretty amazing. And that's Jewelers Row on Sansom and Chestnut Streets between 7th and 8th. Even if you're not shopping for diamonds, take a walk along Jewelers Row. It's so cool to see the old buildings on those streets covered in giant lights and Enormous light displays strung across the street. I've got one more spot to tell you about in Philly, and that's the historic Reading Terminal Market. Reading Terminal is one of the country's oldest public markets. It's one of the largest, too, and it's considered a national landmark. The market opened at the Reading Terminal in 1893, and for almost 125 years, it's been providing Philadelphians some of the freshest produce, locally sourced meat and seafood, plus amazing food vendors with delicacies from all over the world. Reading Terminal Market is open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. So it's a bitch to try and get there after work, even if you work in the city. You'll find bakeries and florists, crafters, cheese purveyors, 
They've got Pennsylvania Dutch merchants, but they're not there on Sundays. There is so much to see and eat at the Reading Terminal Market, you will go a little crazy the first time you visit. Every year for the holidays, the market sets up an incredible train display. And these aren't tiny little trains. These are the sort of trains my grandfather collected. The cars are about the size of shoe boxes. And I can't tell if some of them are antiques or if they're reproductions, but it doesn't really matter because they're beautiful and charming. And they remind me of Christmas when I was little at my grandparents' house. This year, the Holiday Railroad at Reading Terminal features five different sections and 25 individual trains. One vignette is the North Pole, where the train drops off passengers to visit Santa and his reindeer. Another section is 1930s Reading Terminal Market, which offers a view of the market 90 years ago. Then there's the Underground. That's a display that cuts into the stone basement of the market to connect the holiday train with SEPTA, which is risky in my opinion because SEPTA is an ass pain, but technically these are toys, so it should be okay. The last two sections are the Dutch countryside with views of Amish farms and barns, and then an old English railway, which is a trip to a small island off the coast of England. Reading Terminal Market is on the corner of 12th and Arch Streets. It's not that far from my beloved city hall. So you could hit Christmas Village and the ice rink at City Hall on Broad Street and then walk just a few blocks to Reading Terminal Market. Yeah, it's cold out. It's a short walk. You'll be all right. There are so many other wonderful events around the city and amazing places for Christmas lights like Macy's, South 13th Street, Franklin Square. All of those and more were covered in last year's Holiday Happenings episode. Before we venture outside the city into the suburbs for a few more wonderful ways to celebrate the season, I'm going to take a quick podcast promo break to run some spots for a few of my favorite shows and tell you about a special offer from the website, The Lineup. We'll be back in a few. It's the most wonderful time of the year With the kids jingle belling and everyone telling you be of good cheer It's the most wonderful time of the year Twisters, I've talked to you a few times about Maisie and Lee Bourbon Barrel Aged Maple Syrup, which is one of the most amazing foods that will ever grace your tongue. You've heard all about how much I love the bourbon and wheat whiskey aged maple syrups. You've told me how good it sounds, and a few of you know firsthand because you've bought Maisie and Lee syrups. Well, Maisie and Lee have a special product for the holidays. It's a 50 milliliter maple leaf shaped bottle for just $7. It's the perfect size and price when you need a little something as a small token of thanks for someone at Christmas, like the school bus driver, a teacher, maybe a neighbor, These bottles are so festive, and when the recipient tastes what's inside, they're going to love it. You can find out more about Maisie and Lee and how to order on their Facebook page or on their website at MaisieandLee.com. That's M-A-S-E-Y-A-N-D-L-E-I-G-H dot com. Hi. This is Hannah from the Film Rose Podcast. Hi, I'm Jen. My name's Vanessa. Hi, my name is Stacy, and I listen to Our Americana because it reminds me how important community is. Because it tells the stories of people and places in small-town America that we'd never get to hear about anywhere else. I love hearing about parts of our country that I didn't even know existed. And the reason I listen to Our Americana is for the stories. Stories of average Americans, stories that I otherwise may have never heard. I liked hearing about the younger generation moving back home to these small towns or moving out of these big cities because they were so passionate about community. The podcast has definitely inspired me to want to visit America. Despite being such a huge nation, it is clearly the people and communities which give it its heart and soul. Not only is Josh a great narrator, 
but he's a great listener. He's very good at capturing the essence of people in the essence of a small town. Our Americana changes the way I look at America. It's not just my little town with my little struggles. Josh tells stories I didn't even know I needed to hear and gives small town America a platform to shine. I'm Josh Hallmark, the host of Our Americana. I spent six months living in a van, traveling the country in search of what it means to be American. What I found was community and connectivity. And so I created a podcast to celebrate that. And what better place to start than small town America? Whether it's the West Virginia mining town where a gay club is the center of the community, or a seaside village that was adopted by an orphaned orca, or a Minnesota town that was revitalized by a dog, The heart of these stories is always community coming together in spite of their differences for the greater good. America is so much more than what we see on the news, and Our Americana celebrates that. You can listen to Our Americana on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, and all your other favorite podcatchers. You might have heard me mention before, I am a huge fan of subscription boxes. I love the idea of exclusive merchandise that's been selected just for people like me. Sci-fi nerds, Star Wars fans, you name it. Well, our friends at the lineup noticed what they call a lack of disturbing box subscription options, and I have to agree with them. As a horror fan, the idea of a subscription box with creepy, bizarre items sounds like heaven to me. With that in mind, The Lineup, which is a website that curates some of the creepiest, scariest, and most disturbing content on the internet, launched something called Creepy Crate. The team at The Lineup scoured the internet for the coolest, creepiest, most twisted goodies to delight and devil the most serious fan. Here's what Creepy Crate subscription service is. It's $29.99 per crate. Now, they release a new box every other month, So if you subscribe, you get six crates a year. The last day to order a crate for the month is the 8th because crates ship on the 15th. Each crate's retail value, though, is $55 or more. They produce limited edition exclusive items for Creepy Crate, like t-shirts, true crime travel mugs, enamel pins, and so much more. The team at the lineup sent me a crate to check out, so I am telling you all of this from personal experience. Creepy Crate is so freaking cool. Crate number four, which was their Halloween box, and that's the one they sent me, had buttons, a custom tee, ebook downloads, comics, and a mystery that you have to solve. Plus, it was actually valued at $85. Each crate always contains at least one ebook download for a true crime or horror book. Here's the best part. The lineup is offering a special promotion for Twisted Philly listeners. If you use promo code TWISTEDPHILLY, you'll get $5 off your Creepy Crate subscription. Just go to creepycrate.store for more information and to subscribe. Hi, I'm Lainey, host of the new podcast, We're All Just Pretending. It's a podcast that has elements of Dear Abby with a twist of Post Secret. Every episode, I'll read listener questions and provide advice and insight as a friend. My own pod friends will even join in and offer their advice on parenting, relationships, and even give you really bad advice on purpose. Since we all have secrets to share, there'll also be a segment focusing on letting the skeletons out of your closet. If you're looking for advice or want to share a secret, head to allpretendingpod.com. And remember, we're all just pretending here. It's the most wonderful time of the year With the kids jingle belling and everyone telling you be of good cheer It's the most wonderful time of the year During last year's Halloween happenings, I mentioned a spot that is a favorite in my family, Lynn Villa Orchards and Media just about 30 minutes southeast of Philly. Well, it's a great place to visit around Christmas, too. Imagine the North Pole if it was on a farm. (laughs) Okay, that sounds a little Hicksville. And you know what? I'm totally okay with that. You can cut down your own Christmas tree if, like me, you enjoy putting up a real tree every year and contributing to the deforestation of our country. 
The Linvilla shop is filled with homemade jams, jellies, pies, all sorts of delicious treats made right there at Linvilla, and some items from other parts of Pennsylvania. Santa is there every Friday and Saturday. The best part about Christmas land at Linvilla Orchards is every Sunday night through December 24th, they have caroling hay rides. Yes, Christmas carols on a hay ride with hot apple cider. That sounds like such a blissful evening to me. And since my daughter will be away over Christmas this year, I think I'm going to head to Lynn Villa on Christmas Eve for a Christmas caroling hayride. My good friend Christina D., who was at the Twisted Trip live show, shared an event on the Twisted Philly discussion group on Facebook that I'd never heard of before, and it's only 10 minutes from my house. It's the Phoenixville Firebird Festival. The town of Phoenixville is about 45 minutes northwest of Philly. It's not too far from King of Prussia or Valley Forge. It is such a fun little town. The Colonial Theater is in Phoenixville, which you should remember from the Philly horror movie episode. They have so many First Fridays in Phoenixville with movies, music, food. It's a great place to hang out. There's fantastic little shops and bars all over town. Well, this weekend, on Saturday, December 9th, Phoenixville hosts their annual Firebird Festival. Every year, the town builds an enormous wooden phoenix, or Firebird, in celebration of the town's name. This year is the 14th Firebird Festival. Besides building and then burning the giant phoenix, the event has all sorts of artists and crafters, musicians, food, food trucks, wine tasting. What does all of that have to do with Christmas? Fuck if I know, other than it's a few weeks before Christmas. And I'm sure some of those artists and crafters will have holiday wares to sell. And it's just a great time, especially if you're looking for something fun to do that isn't traditionally Christmassy. Let's talk about Christmas trains for a bit. There are so many Christmas Express trains in the Philly suburbs and further outside the city, and some of them are definitely worth the ride. The Westchester Railroad features a 90-minute trip on a heated, decorated train through Chester Creek Valley. It's a beautiful part of Chester County. Santa is there to greet you at the station, then he hops on board the train with you for a ride to the historic Glen Mill Station. And once you get there, you can sit on Santa's lap, get some pictures, and explore the Glen Mill Station that's over 130 years old. The Santa's Express at the Westchester Railroad runs every weekend at 11 a.m., 1 p.m., 3 p.m., and 5 p.m. through December 23rd. And this shit sells out really fast. So if you have even the slightest interest, you need to go online now. I'm serious. Hit pause. Stop listening to Twisted Philly. Go to www.westchesterrr.net and buy tickets. Then come on back and finish the episode. And if you're out in Westchester, spend the day, do the train ride, then go shopping because Westchester has such a beautiful, quaint, historic downtown area with some of the best little shops and restaurants. Oh, so many restaurants. And my tattoo parlor is out there too. Hi, Rollers. Hey, Doug. What up? North of the city, we have the North Pole Express at the New Hope and Ivyland Railroad. This is another spot where you will want to do more than just ride the Santa train, because New Hope is one of the best little towns in Pennsylvania. You can stroll along the Delaware River while you're surrounded by old historic charm and holiday decorations. There's shopping, there's dining. Do you get the theme here, all these cute little quaint towns in the Philly suburbs? Shopping, eating more shopping, more eating, and even more shopping. I love New Hope. It's one of the real gems of a town in Pennsylvania, and it's only about an hour north of Philadelphia. The New Hope and Ivy Lane Railroad features two different Santa experiences. They've got Santa's Steam Spectacular and the North Pole Express. Both take you through the scenic Bucks County countryside, and you'll be joined by Santa and Mrs. Claus, for a cup of hot cocoa and cookies. The North Pole Express is a diesel train, and the Steam Spectacular, as you might expect, is an old-fashioned steam engine. What's so great about these experiences in New Hope is each family gets a personal visit with Santa and Mrs. Claus and a gift to take home. 
<laughs> All of that sounds wonderful. And it is. And it comes at a price. Even though the Westchester Railroad is closer to me, I really wanted to check out the steam engine in New Hope. So I went online to buy myself a ticket and I said, 80 bucks, which is the cost of an adult in coach class during off peak hours. And the prices just go up from there. You even have to buy a ticket for infants aged zero to two. How is an infant aged zero? So while this looks like an amazing Christmas experience, I don't want to spend over 150 bucks for me and the kid to ride a steam train for an hour. Shit, it costs less than that for us to take the train to New York City for the day and see the tree at Rockefeller Center. So I think that's going to be the train ride we would do instead of New Hope Railroad. One of the best railroad experiences in the state, not only during the holidays, but any time of year, and I say this from personal experience, is the Strasburg Railroad in Lancaster County. It's about an hour and a half west of Philly, and it is so worth the trip. They have four different Santa train experiences. There's the Paradise Express that takes you on a round-trip journey to Paradise, Pennsylvania. That's a town we'll be talking about in the next episode of Twisted Philly. The Night Before Christmas train features a guest reader dressed in Victorian sleep clothes reading the classic poem, The Night Before Christmas. There's milk and cookies, and kids are encouraged to come dressed in their pajamas. It's so precious. That particular train experience is only available on certain Thursday and Friday nights. They have a Christmas feast ride that offers a traditional Christmas dinner on a holiday train. You'll dine on turkey and ham, old school green bean casserole, gingerbread cookies, and apple pie. The menu may not sound all that fancy, but I am telling you, those simple traditional dishes taste better than you could possibly imagine when they're cooked out in the Amish country. I make a brown bag apple pie. It's a recipe I got from my friend Robin, with whom I went to high school. She got it from her mom, who got it from an Amish woman. I don't even like apple pie, but this recipe, and then slow cooking it in a brown bag in the oven, like a grocery store brown bag, it does something to that pie. You cook it for over an hour, low and slow, in the brown bag, and the apples get so soft and juicy. And then after more than an hour, you cut a hole in the bag, turn up the heat so the crust can brown, but you've already protected the apples. It is insane. I cut a huge honking piece of that pie because it's so damn good. That's what Amish cooking does to you. It makes you eat food you would normally never eat. The Strasbourg Railroad also has a Christmas tree train ride. You'll hop aboard a train that takes you out to a Christmas tree farm where you pick out your tree, and then your tree is delivered back to the station on a flatbed steam engine. If I wasn't traveling so much this month, I would definitely do the Christmas tree train ride. Obviously, you need tickets for all of this. Ticket prices are very reasonable, like 30 bucks or less. Go to their website at strasburgrailroad.com. That's S-T-R-A-S-B-U-R-G railroad.com for dates, times, tickets, and to get a few more details. Even if you can't go on any of these train rides because it doesn't work with your schedule or because you don't live in Pennsylvania, I think you'd still enjoy checking them out online. There are so many pictures of almost everything I talked about so far. And I think it's fun to picture yourself doing these things or who knows, maybe you'll plan a trip to the Keystone State in the future. In last year's episode, we talked about some of the best places to see Christmas lights in Philly. And this year, I want to share a few spots outside the city. There's a spot in Yardley, Pennsylvania called Shady Brook Farms. It's a family-owned farm that's been operating for over 100 years. This is their 23rd year offering a holiday light show, and it is incredible. You'll spend 20 minutes driving a two-mile trail that is lit up brighter than the night sky, with a holiday light display that totals over 3 million twinkle lights. Take that, Clark Griswold. Fuck me, I finally said it right. I'm so ashamed I said Charles Griswold in the last episode. <laughs> 250 strands of light, 100 individual bulbs per strand for a grand total of 25,000 imported Italian twinkle lights. 25,000. 
hope nobody I know drives by and sees me standing in the yard staring at the house in my pajamas. If they know your dad, they won't think anything of it. Oh. Fire it up, Dad! I dedicate this house to the Griswold family Christmas. Oh. Drum roll, please. <laughs> You can drive through the Shady Brook Farms Holiday Light Show in your own car, or when the weather's nice, you can ride in their open-air wagon. It's 30 bucks for a carload of visitors or $12 per person for the wagon. Buses and vans are a little more. The trail is open almost every night, but the hours vary, so check out their website at shadybrookfarm.com. They've also got this beautiful little market where you can get hot chocolate after the light show and all sorts of little holiday gifts and goodies. One more Bucks County destination I love to help me get in the holiday spirit is Peddler's Village. I know I've talked about Peddler's Village before, and I'm going to talk about it again. It's this beautiful little village, duh, and there are over 60 different little specialty stores where you can find wonderful one-of-a-kind gifts. They've got so many fabulous little restaurants. There I go, shopping and eating again. The entire place is lit up like a thousand suns. Okay, maybe it's not that bright, but every tree and every shop is covered in over a million Christmas lights and Victorian decorations. It's so pretty. They've also got a gingerbread contest running through January 6th with 50 different gingerbread houses in the competition. I love shit like that. Peddler's Village sits at the intersection of routes 202 and 263 in Lahaska, Pennsylvania. Check out their website for hours of operation at www.peddlersvillage.com. There are so many more things to do and see to celebrate the season. I could probably do three hours worth of holiday happenings, and then you'd all get bored, I'd lose my voice, and we'd be miserable. These are just some of my favorites, although a few of them are something new that I haven't done, but I really want to visit this year. And it's not just Philly and Pennsylvania that does it up right for the holidays. You just have to go online and search a little, or ask your friends and your coworkers, look up recommendations on Facebook. As much as I enjoy sitting by the glow of my tree, with a fire roaring in my fireplace and Christmas movies running nonstop, it's good to get the hell out of the house too. Throw on some real clothes instead of yoga pants or sweats. See and be seen. Shit, get your picture taken with Santa. Who cares if you're a grown-ass adult? I think that's awesome. One of my other favorite holiday pastimes is to drive around and look at Christmas lights. And I'm just talking about my own neighborhood. Not even anywhere fancy, just the streets near where I live. I'll grab a hot tea or some hot chocolate for the car ride and drive around for an hour or so with my kid. Some houses are elaborately decorated. Some are simple, but of course, still pretty and others are a bit unusual or perhaps even unorthodox. One we saw the other night has a blow-up of Santa riding an elephant. My kid looked at that and said, so does someone walk into Home Depot and say that? That's what I need on my front lawn. An enormous blow-up elephant with Santa sitting on top. She's a pistol, that kid of mine, and a chip off the old block. Whatever you do this holiday season, make sure you take time for you. Slow down a little. Do something that brings you joy, whatever it is, as long as it's not illegal. And if you're local and you do get out to any of the spots I mentioned, please let me know. Share some pictures with Twisted Philly on social media so we can all see what a good time you had. As always, thank you for listening. That's it from me. Ciao for now, Twisters.